Hi everybody, hi everybody. Welcome, my name is Thomas Daam and today I have the pleasure to talk with Dennis Elbers. He is the creator of um, Graphic Matters. And um, Dennis, congratulations with the festival all so far. And uh, thank you for talking to me. And um, how is the festival going so far? Oh, uh, so, uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, we can't complain. You can see uh, in the background we got lovely weather. And since we have a lot of outdoor exhibitions, it's very important for us. And so far, the response of the audience is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, so many people that are amazed by the quality of the exhibitions, that really enjoy a couple of hours uh, in, in the surroundings and also i indoors at the exhibitions. And so far, um, yeah, I heard only positive response, so okay. I'm quite happy. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That sounds great. It, it's an incredible festival, and I've really enjoyed uh, several exhibitions so far. Um, and can you tell this is now the sixth edition of the festival yes, yes that's correct yeah, yeah. and and um, um, before you started the first one what led up to becoming a curator and an event organizer uh, well <laughs> the funny thing is many people think I am a graphic designer but uh, I'm not mm -hmm. uh, I studied uh, painting and printmaking here at uh, St. Joost Academy in Breda um, during art school already got in touch with a lot of uh, fellow students that studied graphic design and, and, and even before I went to art school I had set a, a sort of a passion for, for graphic design but decided to study uh, painting and printmaking mm -hmm. and also had this, I, I had grown up with organizing events, my dad was an event organizer and actually after graduating I, I found the perfect combination between organizing events which was sort of a talent I had mm -hmm. and, and um, art and design which was uh, a passion and when I graduated I started my own practice as an artist I uh, had several exhibitions sold paintings but I sort of felt like this was not you know my work was not contributing a lot to the world in general mm -hmm. Uh, but I noticed that when I was organizing exhibitions and, and uh, events that uh, would show other people's work that many people were, were interested and I thought well maybe this is my added value mm -hmm. so uh, one day I decided to get rid of my uh, the equipment in the studio so I got rid of all the canvases all the paint all the brushes got in a laptop and, uh, and a desk and started um, as a freelance curator mm -hmm. setting up exhibitions and most of the projects I do are self-initiated so there's some sort of uh, event that leads up to uh, to a concept mm -hmm. and so far I've, I've managed to launch a few successful concepts that actually also uh, allowed me to, to live from this practice mm -hmm. so uh, it was very fortunate and back in uh, 2008 um, there was a very special event here in Breda because it was the opening of the graphic design museum at that point it was the only museum in the world dedicated to graphic design and this was like wow such a good opportunity because um, well you know the museum would show like the tip of the iceberg in graphic design uh, in a white cube um, for people to pay for it and I was like okay but graphic design is, is all around us it's, it's on the streets it's everywhere so sh why not complement uh, the museum with a, a biennial festival which is uh, about what's going on underneath the surface mm -hmm. um, in public space mm -hmm. for everyone mm -hmm. so this was like the general concept of the, the festival to complement this museum with a with an event in public space and well not recently the the museum you know, it already changed name uh, over the course of the years, but now it, it it's unfortunately has shut down. Our event is still here, mm -hmm. and I think m maybe because of this, our event even got more important. Mm -hmm. Because I still believe that uh, you know everyone learns how to to read and write, but to look at imagery and to to think about you know what do these creators mean with these images? How do I respond to them? Um, how can they be interpreted? How can they be? What, what what's the impact of these images is still something many people uh, need to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think our festival offers a nice opportunity not only for designers to see the impact of their colleagues but also for people that are have no clue that uh, about what a designer does to find out what it is a designer does and to find out that you know design is like water mm. it's, it's everywhere around them they actually need it to survive but they only talk about it when it's contaminated yeah. and we try to you know be ahead of this conversation mm. and, and spark this conversation mm. um, we have a motto 
which is like uh, before, uh, before you yeah. tell your motto okay I'll, I'll keep this for <laughs> keep for this last, for later uh, later <laughs> so there are several components like what's graphic design so you have like commercial graphic design communicating everything yeah. Communicating on packaging design, on on uh, promoting uh, events or music festivals, or mm. it's even graphic design in apps and uh, in technology. Like and, but your festival is now focusing uh, more on the social activism part of the of the graphic design. Um, why is that? And can you fr- reflect also a little bit back to the beginning because. I followed your your um, your events over the years, and I was thinking that it was in the beginning th- there was some, but there was less. It was a yeah. different thing. So where came mm-hmm. where? So I have a couple of questions. Where come your interest from no, for I, the yeah, social the social awareness yeah. in graphic design, and why use graphic design for this? Well, thing? W- w- you know, you, you uh, I, I personally believe that you learn from doing. Mm-hmm. So when we started out, we actually had no clue what what is a graphic design festival, mm. and we we learned by by just doing stuff, uh, um, creating shows, uh, doing public interventions, and and by doing so, I sort of noticed that uh, what I found particularly interesting is not the commercial graphic design because that's already everywhere, mm. but it's also how graphic design is is changing. Like many people were discussing, what is graphic design? Is it print? You know, or is it also digital? Uh, how does it relate to illustration, to animation, to photography? Uh, and to us, um, yeah, we, we see it as a, in a very broad perspective. So we did a lot of shows and then we found out that there's actually certain roles we like to define uh, for graphic designers. So it's not about disciplines, but it's about attitudes. How do these uh, designers use their capacities and uh, their their abilities to create mass communication? Uh, so this is what led to um, to an exhibition in 2012 about visual storytelling. And in this exhibition, we sort of defined four major roles. This was the designer as author, as journalist, as scientist, and as an agitator. And this sort of uh, looking at uh, design from this perspective was what uh, sort of shaped our focus now. And uh, this year we, we decided to focus on this agitator part. So the designer um, being able to spark uh, public conversation about current objects, mm. topics. And um, what I find really interesting is, is the self-initiated project. So to to show people what it is other people t- care about. Mm. So it's not about the commercial uh, client that commissions a, a packaging or an advertising. Uh, you know, there, there's so many festivals, so many talks you can see about these mm. subjects. So we, we focus on what these designers as persons truly care about Mm -hmm. and how does this also shape their practice Mm -hmm. because by excluding uh, certain uh, uh, clients or by focusing on what you truly believe in yourself you can also create your practice Mm -hmm. and and I think you know we show over 200 designers and and many of them have um, a very successful practice based on on what they believe in Mm -hmm. and that's what we would like to show Mm -hmm. here. Does this answer all your questions? <laughs> yeah. No, and, 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 and this is what we learned no, but over there the years. For, for me, it's like different because I, I'm i also a graphic designer, but I am i don't know if I per se have this attitude in um, oh, being you do have, active, uh, but, but on a different, in a different, on a different yeah. level, not by, by making, but by doing something else like this, for example. Well, I think the fact that you're interviewing me mm. Uh, you know, th- this uh, urge comes from your background as a graphic designer, uh, from from your personal fascination to learn more about mm. what's what's uh, uh, inspiring other people, and you create this platform like mm. Neil Moret to uh, to distribute this. Mm. So this is one example of how you can do it. So it, it, it's not about changing the world by just one poster, but it, it, but it's about creating a movement from the background you have as a designer. So you you. You have a, a certain uh, perspective mm. on on society, on what's going on, mm. and and well, you decided to set up this uh, right. this platform uh, while others decide to do other stuff, yeah. and and it's yeah. Uh, is that something that is totally relying on graphic design? Like like because a lot of it's because I go yeah I go yeah exactly it's design driven because it's this base 
of the, you know the way the you set up the uh, the, the the movement yeah. is is based on design principles. So as a designer, you take into account that there is you're you're sort of the intermediary between an audience and a subject, mm -hmm. and and you're the one that translating this. And and the the way you do it, um, it, it, all, it all has to do with your design background. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that's why uh, often uh, projects don't. Uh, it's uh, it's about the way uh, the designers think, mm -hmm. and the physical object sometimes very simple, or, mm -hmm. or maybe is this design, or it's not really designed. Uh, like it, that, that's also why we changed our name. Actually, uh, yeah. we were the Graphic Design Festival Beda before, and and these days design. Uh, many people think about uh, either like uh, a shiny object or this whole uh, design thinking buzz. So that's why I sort of try to focus on, 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 the, uh, on the more important stuff in the name, like graphic. So it has to be like a visual form of communication mm -hmm. you use. And whether this is a, a poster or a vlog, yeah, could be exactly. anything. So you changed the name, you were five years Graphic Design Festival Breda, and then you changed the name to Graphic Matters, what you just said, and then um, so, but was that also because the focus of the festival changed or because you already told like uh, you had four disciplines that you would look like, uh, would, uh, mm -hmm. how do you say that, look at a graphic designer as an as a actor? Well, at every festival we did uh, evaluations with the team, with the audience, with stakeholders and, and as a team we often thought like, okay, this graphic design festival, but is it really the, the proper name for what we do? Yeah. But we couldn't find any better uh, suggestions so that's why we kept it mm. but it's very straightforward but it's all a, a very long name yeah. you know try uh, explaining your URL or your email address mm. at graphicdesignfestival.nl mm. you know mm. it's too many mistakes can be made and then also when in, back in 2008 a festival was uh, people sort of relate to a festival that, that's a bundling of, of activities mm. in different shapes and mm. it takes over a certain period of time mm. but these days like every weekend you can choose between 30 festivals to go yeah. to and they all have uh, um, uh, other things in common mm. like drinking a lot of beer and having this really social engagement so um, that's why we decided you know maybe we should get rid of this festival thing because it, it's now a month long event yeah. uh, while people think of a festival being one two yeah three days uh, and then uh, many of the projects we do get exported uh, abroad so mm -hmm. you know we're, we're just as active as we are in Breda as we are outside Breda so Breda in a name was not always very helpful for us right. doing projects in other cities um, and then you know I told you about the design part so that mm -hmm. only left out graphic yeah. you know, that, that, that really stood out that this is what yeah. is key to us what matters to us yeah. So that's how we came to the graphic matters. Right. <laughs> Very interesting story. It's so funny. Now because in, in when I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, sure. You know, it's great change, easy, yeah. easy going. And then you can also uh, like you, what you said before is your motto, which you didn't tell yeah. yet. Yet you can also put that on. But then we, uh, we go back to the motto later. But I have another question because you said that you um, traveled a lot with the the. Uh, projects that you do here, mm -hmm. that you cre in, uh, initiate here, like for example, but also you work together with other organizations to get um, uh, exhibitions here. And can you tell a bit uh, about that? Is that because of your artist background that you created these exhibitions and that you think of, okay, l how could this work as a traveling thing? Uh, because uh, this is something that I started in er in the early days of the of the festival, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it was actually by coincidence. Um, uh, before I, uh, I spoke about this exhibition, Small Stories, Bigger Picture, in which we uh, had this visual storytelling from, from four different perspectives. And we had a visitor coming from Serbia, uh, and she was like, oh, I really love this show, and we should uh, uh, bring this to Belgrade. Mm. And it's like, sure, why not? Mm. But it was designed to be only shown once in the museum so there were like top heavy objects there were a lot of objects and uh, so we made a special adaptation of this show which could travel and then was shown in, uh, in about seven uh, other places uh, being ranging from museums to festivals to, to all kinds of uh, events and uh, this made us realize that, that if we would prepare an exhibition um, in, in such a way that it could travel afterwards, it, it makes it more sustainable. Mm. 
we put a lot of effort and time and money in uh, into the, the development of the projects mm -hmm. and only to show it in, in Breda um, you know that there's of course many visitors coming here but you know it makes it more worthwhile yeah. if we uh, could expand so um, from that point on from 2014 on we decided that like the major shows we do should always be able to uh, to be repeated elsewhere mm -hmm. so this uh, uh, requires a certain way of, of uh, producing them uh, designing them um, both content wise and, and production wise yeah. and, and that's what we've been doing so far uh, and we've uh, over the years we made many friends abroad, mm -hmm. uh, festivals, uh, other organizers, organizations um, that we shared our content with, mm -hmm. and uh, this led to uh, to a network we set up uh, together with the people in Chaumont, which is called um, Image Network mm -hmm. International Meeting about Graphic Events. So every now and then we set up this meeting, uh, we gather with all these organizers from from events all over Europe and um, share experiences and and sometimes exchange also content. So and they are, that's mainly like a graphic design uh, festival group, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's all events related to graphic design, yeah. but uh, the the forms and shapes they come in is is uh, differs a lot. Yeah, that's true. So um, let's go a bit to the program. Yeah. Can you tell what the motto is and how did you incorporate this motto to the program that everybody can can visit? Well, um, our motto is, well, I have to think of the, the English translation, uh, is we make you look, but you have to see. Right. So, and, and being a, a public festival uh, in public space, uh, it means that, you know, if you want to make people look in public space, mm -hmm. it's difficult because mm -hmm. there's a lot of competition. There's there's architecture, uh, there's advertising, there's other people, uh, you know, there's so much going on in public. So you need to have like really bold, yeah. strong statements. Yeah. And this can either be um, the, the, what they communicate or how they communicate. And uh, so, so this is, was for this year definitely a focus point to come up with presentations that can stand out in public. Yeah. Uh, so it has to do with the location you choose, but also the the yeah the way you present mm -hmm. the medium. Um, we're here now at, at Flags of Peace. I think it's it's yeah. a nice example of how uh, our, our interventions mm -hmm. uh, relate to public space um, these are 100 flagpoles with with 100 different flags uh, in them all about peace it's a project initiated by trapped in suburbia and it's already here for for two months uh, and it's uh, every time I come here I'm sort of amazed by how it transferred this uh, this square it's, it's, it used to be a very empty um, gray space yeah. and these flags sort of divided into, uh, and, and created uh, a very yeah, more intimate space and it's very calming to be here. I really enjoy just sitting here like watching these these flags wave and, and every, every now and then the wind drops and mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a very uh, um, yeah, very, very nice environment yeah. uh, to, uh, to be. It's also a nice example of a very collective work that is presented during the festival, right? Yeah, yeah. well, the, there's 100 designers participating. They all have a different take on the same yeah. subject. So for, for an audience to relate to the subject of peace, mm -hmm. of course, is, is something many of us yeah. can. And of course, uh, there's, you know, people have different favorites. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kids like, uh, we, we have a lot of educational mm -hmm. projects here. So the kids talk about what pieces to them but yeah. also how they see it reflected in in, uh, in the designs and it's a really nice conversation starter and actually that's what most of our projects are aiming to do to start a conversation so we relate we relate to subjects people recognize from the news uh, from their daily environment uh, and then uh, these are shown in a way that it also tells you a bit about design mm -hmm. and its impact yeah it's also like what you did in the, for example, the Design and Descent exhibition. You, that's a poster exhibition about uh, posters about descent over, over a period from the 60s till now. And what you did is you created, uh, the or sorry, the original exhibition was created by uh, Michael Ulrich and uh, Milton Glaser. You brought it here and you added this extra hi historical layer of e um, events that happened during the time yeah. and that's also what I notice in all the exhibitions that 
you are really aware of the like the social the bigger social context in in where the graphic design is made or is presented which makes it also very interesting to watch from a different perspective yeah well the, that that's the fact that we um, have to deal you know our audience is not just designers only right. so we, we have to explain a bit more and mm. and as a designer you can see this poster and you can see why it's clever or or why uh, um, it's important for the history of graphic design but now we're discussing our whole history as a human uh, beings on, on this planet so yeah. um, to provide some insight on on what happened in this period what led up to these mm. uh, uh, this Designs and how they impact also maybe the the, the next decade mm. uh, that was very important to us, and also the fact that it's not just posters. Uh, we added a lot of work that is also uh, some digital uh, stuff. Mm. There's some urban interventions. Mm. Uh, um, so we we also wanted to express the uh, the fact that graphic design is going beyond printed matter. Right. And and uh, what's a personal highlight for you? Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, well. Personal highlight was definitely the opening talk show. Right. Um, what I find very important is to disseminate uh, what's going on and also to show people who are these people designing this stuff that make you think about uh, what's going on. So we we set up a, a talk show format and had a really interesting guests coming in from all over the world, designers that are participating with their projects in our festival, and um, yeah, did a a really interesting talk show um, for a selected audience uh, but this is definitely a format we w would like to expand in yeah. the future uh, to something that will happen more regularly and hopefully also attracts a lot of people or th the role already the, was like 50 50 mm -hmm. designers and and non-designers mm -hmm. in the room and um, what I found most rewarding is that of course the designers were enthusiastic but many of the people that are not really designing themselves uh, they're either government officials um, people that run businesses or you know do, doing other stuff and they were really intrigued by this mm -hmm. talk show and by the stories they heard from these designers so this really proves that that you know getting these stories out will make people more aware of the impact of design and maybe next time when they uh, need to communicate a message they, they can also rely more on the designers they work with yeah. or they know better what to look for in a designer yeah. so that that's the the impact we try to have as a festival mm -hmm. so and looking a bit for, for ahead like yeah. Um, what are your plans for the future, Dennis? La what, what, uh, let, let's f first finish like this amazing festival, which is to the 22nd of October. You should all come. Um, and uh, what's after that? What are your What are your plans for the festival and further? Well, of course, uh, 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 traveling some projects would, uh, would is always nice and uh, is something we're preparing right now. Uh, also, we we want to be more active in between uh, the festivals. There's a two-year period, mm -hmm. and um, we were often, you know, on the road showing our projects elsewhere. Uh, but we want to start our own project space here in Breda, also to get more of our international friends in and to uh, set up more collaborations. Mm -hmm. So we're aiming for our own gallery space, um, hopefully in the same building we're now exhibiting in. Yeah, I, I totally forgot to ask, how did it happen? Because you are in such a nice historical building, it was an old, it's an old um, so caserne, army yeah, army base, yeah, yeah. sorry. <coughs> how did that happen? <laughs> Uh, well, um, I, I told you about the un unfortunate uh, disappearance of the, the Graphic Design Museum. They uh, they merged with uh, the what was called the Breda's Museum. They're now called the Stedelijk Museum Breda, uh, which meant that w the old museum building uh, was vacant and um, it's owned by the city they're planning to sell it uh, and um, yeah, up to that moment it's it's vacant. So we managed to uh, to rent it for two months so we can present all our exhibitions sort of situated around this building and it's a very uh, characteristic building mm -hmm. it's an old army base then turned into a museum so it's perfect surroundings mm -hmm. for us and the good thing is that like all the outdoor stuff is sort of in the neighborhood so uh, um, in yeah, previous park, there's, a, there's a park around yeah. around the building so the building is over there quite close <laughs> quite uh, close yeah and this is like the whole park area that's around the building yeah. and so and this is like this is the startup or the first step into your getting your own gallery yeah, yeah definitely uh, it is uh, we're now actually trying to uh, um, together with a group of people uh, buy the building we're renting oh, wow. 
um, but we're all, uh, so we can have a temporary space for the festival and, and uh, together with Breda Photo, another mm-hmm. huge festival um, here. But we're also looking for having our own uh, um, full-time gallery space as well in the neighborhood. So uh, yeah, that that's definitely coming up in the future. Uh, and have some really cool ideas about exhibitions we'd like to show there, but we're already planning the next festival uh, in two years' time, so uh, we're researching topics and uh, a pretty good idea w- where this will be heading. Yeah. And another really exciting idea is that we're starting uh, the Graphic Matter Studio, which is not a design studio, but it's actually an um, event organizing studio. What we found out, uh, it, for us it was always hard to find proper stuff, like uh and we have a very good team right now but you know designers are not trained in event organizing and uh, event organizers are not trained in design Mm. so there was always you know some difficulties finding the right people to to work with us and from uh next year on we'll start the studio which is like a two-year work experience place so we have uh, um, three seats available uh, for designers that want to become organizers or organizers that want to do more creative uh, uh, events they learn in practice they work for us 50 percent of the time and the other time they have to set up their own business so they have to be uh, entrepreneurs and and create own concepts and uh, they get uh, coaching and and feedback from us uh, so we're expanding our team and, and this is going to be like a very experimental research and uh, development uh, um, uh, department for our organization. So that's yeah. going to be amazing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's um, mind-blowing. Um, and it, is that for just graduated or people that are already like in the business want uh, want to change or we we sort of uh, uh, the f- is it more like a summer school a, a very extended summer school no, yeah it's a very intense relationship we'll be uh dealing with it's a two year working period uh 50% of the time 24 hours per day access to the studio right. uh we're aiming for people that um just graduated or have a five year work experience so if you graduated in the last five years then you are uh, f- uh, able to apply and um, so we're going to run a two-year pilot and then hopefully uh, continue the project uh, in, the, in the future that's very exciting you, everybody should supl- apply yeah. that's wow that <coughs> sorry gee that's a good idea Dennis <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thank you uh, okay that's that's kind of a f- big future plan. So um, yeah, let's finish up with um, the Neon Five. That's what I always ask at the end of the interview, and mm-hmm. that's um, five recommendations in uh, one cat- in five categories. One recommendation, and let's start with the book. Okay, with the book. Well, um, at, uh, during our opening, we invited Liz McQuiston to to uh, a speed lecture on uh, visual protest, and she wrote a book um, called Visual Impact. Mm-hmm. And this is a book which was very helpful to us uh, curating this uh, this whole festival, and it's definitely worth reading. Yeah. Uh, so that would be my my okay. tip. Okay. Good. And um, next to your own festival, and other festival, which you would recommend everybody to go. <laughs> uh, or let's let's say differently, which one inspires you to create uh, graphic matters? Uh, well, of course, we we went to check out when we first had the idea for doing a design festival. We went to Chamon to check it out. Yeah. But personally, um, I really uh, look forward to going to the graphic design festival in Scotland, which actually got inspired by us. Yeah. Uh, and it's in um, let's see, that's coming in October, right? Yeah. Yeah. When we finish, they uh, they kick off, um, and you know we we have so many amazing friends in in the image network. So I definitely want to visit all those uh, those beautiful yeah. events. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any other non-design related events that that inspired us because I think that that's also very important. Like uh, you know you can uh, look in your own area for inspiration but i think it's 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 more interesting to see what's going on mm. beyond this point um i would definitely recommend uh, today's art festival in uh, in the hague yeah that was in the same weekend as you opened right yeah, it was yeah. last so l- I completely missed yeah. it but um yeah it's an amazing festival yeah, yeah definitely okay um food food <laughs> oh um 
<laughs> we have such <laughs> a good restaurant. Yeah, uh, you have a great restaurant in the fe- in the f- uh, in the in the festival uh, yeah. location in the venue. Yeah, I w- yeah, we have a very good chef we work with for a couple of years, and he works a lot with local products mm. and, and creates these amazing uh, meals. But uh, I also run uh, a pop-up restaurant every now and then. It's called Panne op Dak, which mm. is on the roof of uh, a parking garage here mm. in the city, which is yeah. also pretty cool. We are now on a parking garage. Yeah, but it's a it's a different one. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And uh, what's the name of the chef? That would be very important. Uh, uh, Ralf Geerts is the name of the chef. Okay. And um, movie or television? Uh, I always forget like movie titles. Uh, uh, I do like binge watching uh, together with my wife. Yeah. Um, currently, what are we watching? Bloodline, which is getting annoying. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been so occupied with with this event right. that uh, yeah, there's hardly it. any space in my mind to to even think of proper yeah. tips okay. Okay. let's go to the next one uh, miscellaneous something from your life you would recommend everybody to do <laughs> man these are the hardest questions ever just, uh, just the first thing that pops up yeah, the first thing that pops up um, this like I'm, I'm just thinking oh, festival music or, or whatever Oh yeah, oh. you are a music guy, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we did uh, in 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 the past. I organized uh, a lot of music festivals. So every time I visit the festival, I always look from like the the organizer perspective. Mm-hmm. So looking how other people done their uh, yeah. their shit. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's like twenty four hour work mode in here. Okay, um, something. Well, what I really look forward to um, is um, a. M- I'm I'm taking a sort of a sabbatical soon uh, for one month. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so not like uh, Sarkmeister seven okay. years plus one, yeah. but just a month. And uh, that's what I look look forward to. And that's what I would advise everyone. Just every now and then, you know, if you're so preoccupied with the stuff you're doing like I am right now, yeah. it's always good to take a distance and, uh, yeah. you know, o- also make radical choices. Like um, I, I told you, I, I got rid of all the stuff in my, mm. my uh, studio and started an office. Mm. And um, you know, if if you really want it, just do it. Right, just do it. Yeah. Okay. Great, Dennis. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, everybody. Um, I'm here with Dennis again. Come to Breda. It's a great festival. You get really inspired. Uh, inspired. And um, yeah. See you next time with Studio Smack. I hope. Bye bye.